Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we're out on the launch pad again on this uh, very cloudy day at Cape Canaveral to uh, launch our Venus aircraft, rocket-powered glider. Uh, it's the uh, origami project. So uh, our relative inclination with the moon is as low as it's going to be, so we'll set our throttle to full, SAS is on, ignition sequence start. And we're lit. Let's get these clamps off. And we're away. Alright, well, uh, just like in testing, this uh, mission is being launched on a uh, DN-1A. I think I may have misidentified it as a 1B before, but it is the A variant. It has the four RL-10s as the upper stage and not the single J-2 or HG-3, which would uh, more likely be the case. But uh, anyway, we're coming up here on our gravity turn, so I'm going to go ahead and try to fly this little guy to, to uh, orbit, and uh, I will pick all of you up there. So another uh, smooth and flawless flight for the uh, DN-1A. Um, you'll notice uh, a different texture on the engines, um, the parts we're playing with. I've got now three HG3 textures to choose from. Uh, I have done more tweaking with the plume, but haven't got it quite uh, right just yet, but uh, I am working on it, so more on that later, but uh, other than that, this was completely textbook. This was, it was relatively easy. Um, I almost tried to take an RA-9 flight path out of habit. I, I actually did this launch right after the last one. Uh, I was able to solve a lot of the wiggles up front by just uh, strutting the, uh, the transfer stage tank to the uh, heat shield above it. There goes booster set, but now you can see what I'm talking about with the uh, effects being not quite right. Um, there are actually too many effects listed for me to be able to edit them all here in game, but uh, I've made lots of notes. Anyway, uh, time to get our boot sequence going and to um, get all of our antennas angled properly. You'll notice that the transfer stage is actually a thinner diameter than the heat shield in front of it now. That was another change that I made, but uh, I did make it a little bit longer. More or less, we have uh, roughly the same delta V figures that we had before. So no real changes there, and also uh, nothing interesting to report, which is, uh, I guess, what a good launch looks like. <laughs> more or less so um, I'm hoping you guys can just uh, enjoy the scenery with me for a little bit uh, I may or may not have been spinning in my chair while all this was happening don't hold that against me All right, there we are, uh, 199 by 226. That's uh, a lot better of an orbit than I really could have asked for. So uh, let's uh, get our RCS turned on, let the game do a hiccup, and we're gonna stage away the core and pull ourselves free, hopefully without scraping too much paint. Yeah, that was entirely too much to ask for. I don't know why it's insisting on pitching us down like that. I guess that would be uh, yawing us to the left, or to the right. I'm now compensating by trying to go left. Alright, so now we can uh, bring up our maneuver planner and get our node for Venus plotted. Set as target, there we go. Computing. Computing. 
There we go. ASAP should be any time now. Lowest delta V also any time now. Create node. Perfect. Let's see how close that gets us. Ah, that was what I wanted. Focus view. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Although I guess I would really prefer to come in on the daylight side. I guess that's just not a thing right now. So we'll just try to touch this up. Well, maybe. Nope. Ah. All right. No tinkering song. Uh, that'll do for now. It's not like we're going to be able to hit it anyway. So uh, our burn is in, uh, looks like one hour, five minutes. We'll just go ahead and get ourselves angled into the node and then uh, start vaguely pointing in that direction. All right, we are about uh, five minutes out. Let's just touch this up a little bit before we start ulging in. Oh, I should come out of time warp, shouldn't I? Now we're four and a half minutes out. Good job. Good job. All right. Ulge in. We're going to have to stage our engines in. They are very stable. Uh, it says the burn will take one minute, 35 seconds. I'm not sure how much I believe that, but um, yeah, our thrust to weight ratio is only uh, 0.64. That's very interesting. Well, this burn will take 3,400 meters per second. We have 5,000 <laughs> uh, in our uh, liquid hydrogen stage here, or our RL10 stage, I should say, because the core was liquid hydrogen also. I'm really not sure how much I believe that. Uh, they've, they've got, like, what, five ignitions? Ten ignitions? Ten. Yeah. All right. Well, ullage. Uh, ignition. Yeah, now we get a more accurate figure. Nine minutes and ten seconds. Well, that can't be right, because we're going to displace 5,007 minutes and 40-some-odd seconds. Huh. Uh, these little inconsistencies, they really do bug me. Well, that's a good picture. And now just a little bit more into the speddy uppy bits. Uh, of course, trying to find a good angle to uh, take a screenshot. I think that was our core stage that we just saw flying away, which is weird, because we've been at this burn for quite a while now. And uh, this burn does take quite a while, even here in Time Warp. Um, notably because of the lack of thrust on those RL-10s, but it, uh, what was concerning me at the moment was that my Delta V figures are reading straight zeros. Which uh, weirds me out a little bit, because we uh, obviously have more delta V than zero. We're currently burning our engines and displacing some delta V. Uh, these engines don't throttle, but that uh, didn't stop me from trying. And then uh, I'll try to toy the rest of it out on RCS, just to try to make this uh, as accurate as possible. Because I am notoriously bad at getting very close to our maneuver node burns. All right, let's uh, see what that bought us. Huh. Collision course. We're doing uh, better than the node we plotted. That'll be fun. Awesome. Uh, I will take it. I will absolutely take it. Uh, I wonder how much it's going to displace to uh, undock. Well, decouple. And we'll, yeah, let me just check again, because, yeah, well, we are, we're shifting it, so we should probably disable the RCS. Let's, oh, good, I do still have connection here. So, we're going to dispose of this little guy. Because we still have some ignitions and, like, 4,000 meters per second of delta V. 
So why not deorbit a stage that's going to become useless? And since we're on a collision course, I don't really need to do anything else with that spacecraft, like, until it practically gets there. Uh, and that makes me really happy, although we'll jump back and talk about it here in, in a bit. But goodbye, little buddy. Safe travels. Wow. Okay. That... That's so... F that's so weird. Okay. There. That time it actually got to fly away. We didn't, uh, actually... <laughs> that was... Uh, insanely weird. Yeah, I am bringing my periapsis down, aren't I? Oh, yeah, because I just burned for escape. And now I'm trying to deorbit. This might take 4,000 meters per second, but that'd be really interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever actually deorbited something that was on escape velocity, as, like, cleaning stages up and whatnot. Um, obviously, things have returned. The Venus Return Project 1 and 2. Uh, yeah, anyway, so just me lamenting how this is uh, somehow worth something. Okay, now we're bringing in a... Uh, we're not gonna... I'm just gonna let it burn out. Why not see how much of an effect we can have in, in total? Alright, so we're back to the uh, origami spacecraft, and I just thought maybe I'd go over some of these things. Um, I brought with me a comms network. Um, the glider especially and its deployment are... It's super crucial that we have uh, comms with it at all times. Which um, I apparently have neglected around Earth for so long, but I had, I had so many... Uh, missions to Mars that didn't go very well, so there's a lot of debris in orbit there that maintained signal. Uh, not so much for Venus. Pretty much everything we shot there has kind of accomplished its goals. And so I think there's only like maybe two or three things in orbit of Venus, which uh, is not quite the network we'll be looking for. So um, they have long-range comms for independent connection to Earth, and these two combined should give them about 30 million miles of uh, omni-band range. Of course, we'll have this in orbit, too, so we'll have about, you know, five uh, satellites in orbit with similar range. So uh, we'll see what our fuel budget looks like when we get there, although pretty good, considering we haven't even had to unlock these two tanks. This one down here is just RCS for that top part. That, that would be the ablator. There's the fuel tank. Yeah, we haven't used that much, but certainly uh, enough that we could top it off should we feel the need. Make sure these haven't been draining. Good. They are locked. But electric charge is depleting. Now, nah, we're charging now. That's good. If not, we have some solar panels we can deploy. We'll just uh, pop two of these out real quick. Good enough. All right, so that's our, uh, that's our mission in a nutshell. And so far, this is the the best mission <laughs> as far as initial telemetries are concerned. Uh, I think we've had in a good long while. Yeah, look at that. I mean, yes, I would like to come in on the day, but uh, I feel like that's an adjustment we can make later in our orbit. So uh, I will probably set up a node for that um, off camera. Oops, there's something else I meant to do back there. Do, do, do. So, uh, quick and easy. This thing's, uh, this mission's off to a great start. I am very happy to report all things going well, although I hope I'm not, uh, cashing out all my luck too early.
I'm gonna I'm gonna need it for the Mars missions. So now uh, we can throttle back down. How much we don't have very much fuel now. Not even enough to warrant it. So we will just uh follow this stage on in and watch it meet its end. So that's really uh that's gonna do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh look, civilization just ends at the Mississippi. I knew it. I wish I could go back. But there were no cities east of the Mississippi. And the clouds fade in and out. They have to make a theatrical entrance when you're close enough to touch them. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.